A warm welcome to the news at this hour on ANC International. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Elizabeth Omori. Now let's take the headlines. <music> President Buhari promises to address infrastructure deficits with supreme premium on power sector. Supreme Court upholds the elections of governors of Benue and Adamawa states dismisses appeals against their victories. Operation Lafia Dolly declares Meiduguri Damatri Highway safe. Thank you so much for joining us and congratulations to Nigeria as they play on Group C at the Confederation of African Football. Moving up. The first UK-Africa summit has ended in London with the British government announcing new initiatives worth over £1.5 billion expected to massively create job opportunities across Africa. The United Kingdom has also offered to mobilise private investment valued at over £2.4 billion for African countries. The Secretary of Department for International Development, Alok Sharma, made this known while declaring the summit closed. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports. Nigeria and 20 other African countries that account for over 80% of Africa's economy participated at the summit christened Partnership for Prosperity. Organizers believe that as Africa grows and develops, international partnerships and investment will be key to unleashing that potential and delivering a better future for all. United Kingdom wants to be that investment partner of choice for Africa, an ambition clearly shared by participants. And as we get Brexit done, we want a closer trading partnership with African nations. Today, CDC has agreed new investments worth £300 million and are committed to invest a further £2 billion in Africa over the next two years. And what makes the UK different is our recognition that this huge investment needs to be felt by local communities across the whole of Africa. Everyone must share in prosperity. Some members on President Buhari's delegation to the summit described Nigeria's participation as a worthwhile undertaking. We've seen throughout uh, this uh, summit, there's been quite a lot of focus on Nigeria. And I think there's a realization that Nigeria is very much a market uh, and a people uh, that, it's, uh, that it's worth engaging with. So I think we, we go away with um, our stock higher and greater confidence uh, in the, the, the country. And of course, we hope to see this um, translated into concrete uh, investment, greater trade between the two countries, but very importantly, uh, greater uh, investment. Uh, in Nigeria uh, by the British. It's only when you ha have contact and you are relating well with the business communities that you can attract investment. And without investment, you cannot generate trade. And when you generate trade, automatically it dovetails to generating employment and engagement in economic activities. That is what it is all about. And I think we've achieved a lot in that regard. We are likely now to begin to see a re-engagement, a re-engagement that will be beneficial not only for the uh, many African economies, but also for the UK. It means that Nigeria will have a head start in, in any rebuilding of business and investment relations with the UK. Nigeria can lead the way for other African countries to follow. Some governors on the entourage of President Muhammad Buhari used the opportunity to mingle and network with potential investors. The 40 megawatts that in Kuala Dam that has already been finished will be commissioned soon by the president. And Gombe State is advancing ahead to provide an industrial park that will attract major investors. So far, uh, we've gotten to a level of understanding and agreeing with uh, development partners, the DFIT, uh, the Commonwealth Development Corporation, and other business uh, partners that will come and invest especially in agro-allied uh, processing and uh, manufacturing and we shall succeed inshallah. At the tertiary level we are also promoting the Nyimbe economic city and we are looking for companies that can provide infrastructure um, both in areas of transportation and in buildings and roads uh, to, to match 
with our desire to do groundbreaking for Enyimbe Economic City very, very soon. I'm satisfied and happy that uh, within the first day of this conference that I was able to break through. In a write-up, making a case for Commonwealth based on trade, President Muhammad Buhari called for greater UK engagement in Nigeria's economy, saying as the largest economy in Africa with nearly 200 million people, it has a great deal to offer. He said millions of highly skilled, underemployed young people are eager to work, but without the opportunities that foreign investment can bring to create jobs and build businesses. From London, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Still on the sidelines of the summit, President Mohamed Buhari has restated the commitment of his administration towards addressing infrastructure deficit, especially in the past sector, which he described as critical to Nigeria's next level agenda. To this end, he solicited continued support from the World Bank in the task of improving transparency, service delivery and investors' confidence in the sector. The president stated this at an audience with the president of the Bank, David Malpass, on the sidelines of the UK-African Investment Summit. Summit in London. State House correspondent Adam Osamu once again reports. Nigeria is at the moment enjoying a $486 million World Bank credit facility for the rehabilitation and upgrading of electricity transmission substation lines across the country approved in 2018. The investments under the Nigeria Electricity Transmission Project will increase the power transfer capacity of the transmission network and ultimately contribute towards ensuring adequate and reliable power supply necessary for Nigeria's continued economic development. At this meeting with the World Bank officials, President Muhammad Buhari underscored the urgency of reliable, accessible and affordable power supply as genuine efforts are made to take Nigeria to the next level of development. The World Bank, he emphasized, needs to do much more towards achieving the objectives. It was really a question of looking at ongoing discussions between uh, Nigeria and the World Bank and, um, you know, in particular, the engagement uh, of the World Bank uh, in uh, supporting uh, Nigeria's power uh, uh, sector. And uh, there is ongoing cooperation uh, already. And um, so the president of the World Bank uh, sort of reaffirmed the, um, um, you know, the commitment of the World Bank uh, to continue to engage uh, with Nigeria in the, the various uh, areas of uh, uh, that Nigeria needs um, you know, financial support. The current intervention by the World Bank being implemented through to the year 2021 is aimed at addressing key bottlenecks in the transmission network as well as improve access and reliable power supply to Nigerian citizens. On our side, uh, it's a question of um, uh, being uh, very clear uh, the direction we want to go as you address power uh, challenges. Um, don't put all the um, stress on the, the poor, you know, in terms of tariffs and so forth. And the World Bank, you know, fully understood this. So, so we have a very clear, you know, uh, sense of uh, where we want to go. And um, there was a meeting of minds, I think, uh, with the World Bank, and they, they are supportive. From London, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the 2020 World Economic Forum has opened in Switzerland, focusing on issues hindering income equality, societal unity and climate change. The forum is coming at a time the attention of African leaders is doing business with the United Kingdom. Musa Babali reports that only few African countries are participating in the World Economic Forum. This year's World Economic Forum makes the 50th meeting of the forum since its inauguration by German economist Klaus Schwab. It is a forum where global economy is analyzed by political experts and world leaders. Together we will make our nations stronger, our countries safer, our culture richer, our people freer. It is necessary to move beyond short-term technological or economic approaches and to give full consideration to the ethical dimension in seeking resolutions to present problems or proposing initiatives for the future. African leaders as well as their businessmen have been active in the yearly event, 
However, the 2020 forum is coming with a difference. Only three African leaders have indicated interest in participating. The Anana Akufo-Addo of Ghana, Maki Sol of Senegal, and Felix Shizeki of Congo. Other African leaders, including President Muhammadu Buhari of Nigeria, are currently in the United Kingdom for UK-Africa Investment Summit, organized by the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. British Prime Minister was reported to have restricted his ministers from Davos as he hosts African leaders ahead of Brexit. Musa Baba Ali, NTA News. And out of foreign stories, President Mohamed Buhari has sent warm greetings to President Xi Jinping and the citizens of People's Republic of China as a celebrated Chinese lunar year from January 25. President Donald Trump impeachment trial is underway. For these and more stories making the headlines across the globe, let's join Justin Bem Nguyen. Hello and welcome to this segment of the news. President Mohamed Buhari in a formal letter recounts the strides being taken in Nigeria-China relations and says the two countries have new opportunities for mutual benefits. He said that the past year has also been a productive one for China-Nigeria relations. President Mohamed Buhari says the all-round wide-ranging and high-quality bilateral cooperation between Nigeria and China has been further intensified and the belief in the one-China policy reaffirmed. Consider Considering the fact that this year is also the 20th anniversary of Forum for China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC, the president affirms his delight to see that FOCAC has become an effective platform between Nigeria and China and achieved a major progress of boosting concrete trade and cooperation and benefiting people of both countries. President Buhari has wished President Xi Jinping of China that the year of the rat witnesses the common development of the two countries and a better life of peoples. In other news, China's top leaders have warned lower level officials not to cover up the spread of a new coronavirus that has now infected nearly 300 people. The political body responsible for law and order said anyone who concealed new cases would be nailed on the pillar of shame for eternity. The warning came as state media said six people had now died from the virus, which causes a type of pneumonia. It's been confirmed the virus can pass from person to person. The World Health Organization will on Wednesday consider declaring an international public health emergency over the virus, as it did with swine flu and Ebola. Such a declaration, if made, will be seen as an urgent call for a coordinated international response. And that's it from here. My name is Justin Bemuni. Thank you so much, Justin. And in other news, Nigeria and seven other members of the Developing Eight Countries D8 Organization for Economic Cooperation have signed an agreement to strengthen commitment towards the implementation of the Bloc's Health and Social Protection Program. Usman Ali has details. The came into being in 1997 with the agenda of economic cooperation, but the target for the economic sustainability the organization observed is affected by the dynamics of contemporary challenges such as poverty, hunger and diseases amid its growing population of the bloc. Sequel to this, the organization resolved on initiatives to uplift its people by amplifying pillars of health and social protection program. Now the deal has been signed with a high-level diplomatic agreement citing the headquarters of the program in Abuja. The adoption of the health and social protection program by the D8 member countries is therefore timely in assisting member states to reduce poverty and inequality as well as boost healthcare delivery. Resources will be leveraged to fund the key intervention pillars of health, nutrition and poverty, namely access to essential health services, improving the quality of care, governance and human resources for health, preventing non-communicable diseases and providing social protection. A document on strategy that will guide the operation of the program is expected to be developed soon. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. You're watching the news on NTA International. Let's take a break now. More reports when we return. Stay with us. NTAI has gone mobile. Catch your favorite programs anywhere in the world. 
by going to Play Store on Android and App Store on iOS. Search for Vision TV UK, download and install. Thanks for staying with us. Now let's be my such light on meteorology. No imminent danger associated with flooding is anticipated this year going by the 2020 seasonal rainfall prediction released by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMIT. On NGF Fine Face reports, however, that heavy rainfall and dry spell are to be expected. NIMIT rainfall prediction for 2020 indicates a near normal to earlier than normal growing season with earliest onset likely to occur on 24th February in coastal cities of the South South, while northern cities like Sokoto, Kebi, Zamfara, Katsina, Jigawa, Yobe and Boronu states will have onset from 2nd June. Earliest cessation date of around 26 September is expected around Katsina and Sokoto states, while latest cessation date of 28 December is expected in the Niger Delta region. The length of growing season for 2020 is expected to range from 110 to 160 days in the Sahel, Sahelian region of the north and 210 to 280 days in the south. The amount of rainfall will range from 400 millimeters in the north to about 3,000 millimeters in the south. Dry spell is expected in the months of June and July to last from 10 to 21 days in some states of the north. Farmers are advised to avoid early planting due to false start, which is predicted to have greater frequency. They are also advised to adopt moisture conservation techniques to avoid losses during the dry season. To address the challenges of extreme weather events and climate change, NAMI predicts and publishes the expected annual rainfall pattern over the entire country in pursuance of its mandate of advising government and the general public on all aspects of weather and climate related matters. Nigeria Meteorological Agency, NIMES prediction for 2020 also covers temperature forecasts and implications of the outlook on agriculture, water resources management, power generation and distribution, health, transportation, aviation and climate conditions. In Abuja, on NGA, Fine Face, and say news. Now move to the judiciary. The Supreme Court has affirmed the election of Summer Autumn as the governor of Benue State and that of Hamadou Fintere as governor of Adamawa State. The seven-man panel of justices led by Justice Boden Rhodes Vivo dismissed the two appeals for lacking in merit. Viera Chomba reports. In a unanimous judgment of the seven-man panel led by Justice Bode Rudvivos, the Supreme Court, in upholding the submissions of the respondent counsels, said it aligned its decision with the concurrent judgment of the lower courts. In addition, stated that the barometer for measuring overvoting remained the card reader, which was not proved. Counsel to Emmanuel Jimmy Yusuf Ali asked the court to nullify the re-election of Samuel Autumn on the grounds that the difference between the number of accredited voters recorded by the card reader machine and the number of votes recorded were at variance. INEC counsel E.U. Ugonna urged the court to dismiss the appeal because the appellants have no evidence, either documentary or oral, to back up the appeal. Counsel to Autumn Sebastian Horn said, apart from the contradictions between pleadings and results declared, the appellant's case predicted on card reader machine lacked merit as the card reader issue was struck out at the tribunal. Counsel to PDP Chris Uche said the appellant's case suffered acute evidential deficiency both in quality and quantity. Now the mandate given by the good people of Benue State to Governor Autumn has been judicially approved. The Supreme Court equally affirmed Amadou Fintri of PDP as validly elected governor of Adamawa State. The court heard that the APC and his candidate Jibrila Bindo failed to prove their allegations that Fintri emerged through overvoting. Justice Mohamed Dachigo, who read the leaked judgment, held that the appellant did not prove that voting from the disputed 385 polling units in dispute led to the victory of the incumbent. 
in Abuja, Viera Chimoba, NTA News. Away from the judiciary, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the reappointment of Dr. Sam Ankeli as a senior special assistant on disability matters. The president also reappointed Sheo Garba as special assistant disability matters. The appointments take effect from October 15, 2019. Moving on, following incident attacks and kidnappings along Meidugui Damaturu Road, the theatre commander, Operation Life Adole Major General Olushegun Gabriel Adeni says the highway is now safe as the military has re-strategized and intensified patrols to deal decisively with Boko Haram terrorists on the road. The theatre commander says there will be no more checkpoints along the route, but strong mobile operation teams. Maimuna Garba reports. The growing fear and tension due to insecurity on the highway necessitated the theater commander to call for the press conference considering the importance of the roads to Borno State as it is so far the only safe exit and entry point as well as linked to other parts of the country. Major General Olushegun Adeni said the surgence of activities of terrorists on the highway was as a result of failure by the terrorists to achieve their goal of establishing a caliphate thereby had to transform from terrorist to a marauding band of criminals, stressing that the military has degraded the Boko Haram terrorists, which made them resort to attacking soft targets. I want to assure every Nigerian not to fear Boko Haram. My Duguri Damaturu Road is very safe. General Adeni further announced that there will be no checkpoint from Jintulo to Kukareta, stressing that military has intensified clearance and long-range patrols with heavy military presence among others. And no vehicle should stop for them. The time for opening, which is 8 o'clock, will continue to remain. And then the present timing of closing that road by 6 o'clock will remain. The theatre commander further assured Nigerians of the military's commitment to rescue those abducted by the terrorists in Maiduguri, in Minagarba, in TA News. As part of efforts to engender economic activities in Ondo State, the Niger Delta Development Commission says work was soon commenced on Araromi Ilaje, Lagos Road, to link Niger Delta coastal communities and Lagos State. The Minister of State for Niger Delta Affairs, Tayo Alasho Adura, said this when he paid a court to call on Governor Uluwaro Timia Keridolu of Ondo State. The Minister of State for Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Tayo Alasho Adura, explained that the visit was informed by the need to take stock of over 12,000 abandoned projects embarked upon by the NDDC, saying the commission will not initiate new contracts until the abandoned ones are executed. Mr. President agreed with us that we should go for what we call legacy projects. And what I have chosen to do is to go for legacy projects because they are the ones that will and one other thing that I have uh, discussed with our representative at the National Assembly is that we are going to take the, the road of uh, Osokare and give it straight to NDGC. The minister appreciated the governor for supporting the commission in actualizing its mandates. Governor Oluwarati Miyakiridolu expressed support for the ongoing forensic audit of the NDDC commended the efforts at revisiting abandoned projects of the commission in the state. Of the still ambitious sector in the banking, we limited the space for now and found that protecting parts. This still ambitious sector will be an advantage for them. The minister was in Ondo State to assess various abandoned projects of the Niger Delta Development Commission in the state in Akure. Abiola Rio, NTA News. To condolences, President Muhammad Buhari condoles with justices of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and National Judicial Council over the passing of Justice Abubakar Bashir Wali, one of the pioneer legal practitioners from northern Nigeria. The president joined Scano Emirate Council, family members, close associates and professional colleagues in mourning Justice Wali, who was the first judge of Shara Court of Appeal from the north after rising through the ranks and later reaching the peak as justice of the Supreme Court. 
President Buhari affirms that were the contributions of Justice Wali to the development of the country, starting out early in 1945 after his primary school education and ensuring delivery of sound judgment on landmark, on landmark cases that have since become reference in Nigeria's judiciary. The President prays that the Almighty God will accept the soul of the departed and comfort his family. Next is a quick look at the weather prospect for Nigeria and other cities around the world. And that ends the news that is our on NT International. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Don't forget to join us at 9 for the Network News. Good evening.